For this next example, of course, we want to practice a hypothesis test for a mean, as that's the section we're in, but we also want to understand the difference between statistical and practical significance, as they're not the same thing. We want to see the difference between those two things, and hopefully this example will illustrate that for us. Okay, so in Canada, the average age of a patient admitted to the intensive care unit in 2000 was 64.5 years old. A hospital administrator believes that the age of ICU patients has decreased since then. They gather a sample of 6,018 random ICU patients over the period of a few years and find the average age to be 64.28 years with a standard deviation of 8.2 years. Now, the first thing we want to ask is, are these results statistically significant at the 0 0.05 level? Assume the conditions needed to conduct the test are met. So, assume the conditions are met. What does that mean? That means that we don't have to check, right? Do not check random independent normal. As I said to you in an earlier video, we only check random independent normal if it's asked for. If it's not asked for, we don't do it, <laughs> and we're not going to do it. So that's what that part is telling us. So it's assuming the conditions are met, so we don't have to do it. Good. Lovely. We didn't want to do it anyway. All right, so step one. Let's figure out our null and alternative hypotheses. All right, we know this is about average, right? Because it says average right in the problem, right? So that's mu. Okay, what is the average? Well, we assume it's 64.5 because that's from the past. So from the past, we assume 64.5. And then the hospital administrators believe it has decreased since then. So that means that we think it's gone down and it's below 64.5. All right, step one is done. Null and alternative finished. Step two, everybody's favorite step, alpha, it's 0 0.05, <laughs> done. Step three, everybody's least favorite step, because it has all the ugly work. All right, so step three, t0 equals x bar minus mu0 over s over the square root of n. Okay, x bar is given. We just have to find it. They gather a sample of, see they see how this is a sample? This is going to be all the information in this bucket. This is n right there. The average is 64.25, so that's x bar, right? And then this is s. See it? Because that's from the sample. Okay, so that means I have 64.28 as my x bar minus 64.5 divided by s, which is 8.2, divided by the square root of n. There's two divisions in this, which is a little strange. And n was 6018, right? So all of those values came out of this back sentence right here. Now, as per usual, we're not going to find this our own self. We are going to use StatCrunch, right? So we will use StatCrunch. I'm just going to make a note. Use StatCrunch, right? So it's stat, t stat, one sample. This is with summary because we don't have a data table here. So we're going to have to use the with summary feature. Well, that's okay. That's that's actually easier. <laughs> it requires less work on our part. All right, so let's go to StatCrunch. I can close these. It doesn't matter that it's in this old window. It doesn't hurt anything. So stat, t stat, one sample with summary this time. The sample mean was 64.28. The sample, sample standard deviation was 8.2. The sample size was 6018. The null hypothesis is that it's 64.5, and the alternative is that it is decreased. And then make sure you click your p-value plot down here, because that'll get you your step four. So you always want the p-value plot to be selected. And then say compute. So there's your values right there. There's your t-stat, negative 2.08. But if you go to the graph, you can see it as well. 
I mean, the graph actually has everything you need. So negative 2.0813. So let me write that. Negative 2.0813. There we go. So now for step four, I'm going to draw a T curve over here. I know it looks like a normal curve, but it's not. It's a T curve. And then I'm going to label it just like they did in StatCrunch. So I'm going to have my, my shaded tail. And then I'm going to label it better than StatCrunch does because StatCrunch kind of puts all the information up at the top. But we're actually going to put it where it belongs, which is that the p-value is this value right here. So p-value is that area, which is 0 0.0187. My 0 and my 1 merge together. Sorry. 0 0.0187. There we go. had to rewrite it. It's getting blobby. And then down here we put our T0 label just like they tell us to because it's a left tail test. So I follow these instructions. I put my p-value right there and my T0 and then I know my T0 because it's right here. It's negative 2.0813. There's step four done. Step five, we have to make a decision. Right, so our p-value is 0 0.0187, what I was struggling to write on the previous one, and then our alpha is 0 0.05. Well, this is less than that, so therefore we're going to reject H0. Which, by the way, means that the results are statistically significant. That's what statistically significant means, right? Statistically significant. When you get to reject H0, that means statistical significance has been reached. Right? These two things are one and the same. All right, now step six. There is sufficient evidence, because when we reject H0, we say there is sufficient evidence. to support the claim that the mean age of ICU patients is lower than 64.5 years. Now we've done all six steps of the test and we've answered the question, are these results statistically significant? The answer is yes. Right? Statistically significant because we rejected HO and we proved that. Now, before I get into part B, I actually do want to show how to do this with the TI-84. So if you're not with a TI-84, you can skip ahead to the next video where I'll do part B. All right, TI-84 folks. So let's go here to the TI-84. We're going to go to, oh, I'm in the wrong place. So stat tests, t-test number two, just like before is where I just was, but I wanted to show you how to get there. So then you click stats this time. So you move your error, your cursor over to the right so the stats is blinking, and you press enter on it so that it's dark. Then you type in your new values. So 64.5 was our mu zero. Then 64.28. Then 8.2. And then n was 6018. And then say less than, so you got to go to the middle one and press enter to make it dark. And then go to calculate. And you can see the p-value is 0 0.0187, just like StatCrunch got. And the t-stat is negative 2.0183, or 0.813. If you want to see the, t um, the picture, let's see, it should do an okay job on this one because it's not too far away. So let's draw. 
there we go. So we can see that picture. 